It's been 47 years since I last stepped foot on these grounds. The year was 1975. I was eight at the time. My Aunt June took my mother, sister, and I to see the home of one of our founding fathers, author of the Declaration of Independence and third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. I remember little from that trip in 75, and my wife had never been. The day was picture perfect for an impromptu getaway on a mountaintop in Charlottesville, Virginia, and the Monticello, a beautiful place to reconnect with history. Except for vague familiarities, it was as if I was never here. Our tour guide was very engaging and explained such curious artifacts like the jawbone of a mastodon and Oliver Cromwell's death mask. You get a great sense of Jefferson's dedication to learning from the books and objects he collected. The bid chamber was Jefferson's most private space, filled with his personal possessions. As you walk into the parlor, you can almost envision Jefferson entertaining friends and family, as this would have been the center of social activity. Most of Jefferson's art collection can be found here. With a piano on one side and a harpsichord on the other, it's not a stretch to imagine the sounds of a concerto or sonata filling the space. Jefferson and his family took meals twice a day in this dining room, which connects to the tea room through double pocket doors. The one thing I do remember is what I didn't see in 75. I don't recall the attention given to those who were enslaved at Monticello, the residents of Mulberry Row. Mulberry Row was the main street of Monticello's enslaved and was the center of work and domestic life for many. Between 1770 and 1831, there were more than 20 storehouses, workshops, and dwellings. Here in the Negro Quarter, is a replica of one of those dwellings, a 12 by 14 foot single family home. Thomas Jefferson's vegetable garden was massive and also served as a testing ground for new plants. So to the Fawcett, Gillette, Granger, Hemings, Hearn, Coleman, Henderson, and Shelton families, it was finally nice to meet you. Jefferson's winding flower border was a sight to behold with all of its rich, vibrant color. And on a gorgeous day, it's a stroll worth taking by itself. Before closing out our visit, we decided to make a stop at the Jefferson graveyard. Jefferson left explicit instructions, which included a sketch regarding the monument to be erected over his grave. He said on the faces of the obelisk the following inscription and not a word more. Here was buried Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of American Independence, of the Statute of Virginia for Religious Freedom, and father of the University of Virginia. These were the accomplishments he wished to be most remembered. By the 1880s, the original stone had been decimated as a result of visitors taking pieces. What stands today is a larger replacement. On our way to the parking lot, we visited the burial ground of the enslaved, a stark contrast to the Jefferson Cemetery. Nonetheless, this is hallowed ground, a sacred space, a place of memory and meaning for those laid to rest here and their descendants. History is what it is, at times not what we wish or like it to be. However, it is imperative that we seek the truth and truth be told. Transparency and integrity in the telling of our national story is a moral obligation and forms the foundation for which our future stands.
Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe to Dove Life.